baseball. It's America's pastime and Minnesota's passion. The all-new Neighborhood Sports Network, in partnership with the Minnesota Baseball Association, brings you coverage of the 2022 State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Coverage of this great Minnesota tradition is proudly brought to you by The Urgency Room, fast, flexible care. McDonald's owners and operators of Minnesota and Western Wisconsin. Find your golden opportunity at mcdonalds.com slash careers. Xfinity, a better way to watch. Think Bank, meet your money. The Star Tribune, your home for the best prep coverage. And by the Minnesota Twins. Get tickets for Town Ball Night at Target Field on September 10th. Live coverage throughout the Town Ball Tourney can be seen right here on the Neighborhood Sports Network. That's NSPN.TV. Welcome to the neighborhood. Now, let's get out to the ballpark.
everybody, and welcome to the neighborhood. Belfield and Faribault are home today. I am Eric Murphy. Pumped to be on the call for this afternoon's second round action. Class C, the Stark Longhorns and the Bemidji Blue Rocks. So let's take a closer look at today's matchup. Starting out with Stark, runner-up in Region 2C, brought home an exciting victory over a great Maple Lake program last week to move on to this second round. The Horns managed by Dusty Mangan come in at 20 and six overall, one of the top franchises in Brown County. Last week's victory, the first state tourney win for Stark since 1988, uh, a much welcome victory for Region 2C. Uh, Stark, an athletic bunch, ton of experience and grit in the lineup, four players batting over 350, led by Zach Halla, a great season, comes in batting 405, nine doubles, five triples, three home runs. That is the uh, team leader in all three of those categories. Hall up also 6-2 and two on the mound with a 2-3-3 ERA. There's a chance we could see Zach on the mound today, but Southpaw's Adam Selner will start like he did last week. He's 5-0 and oh with a 2.61. Justin Haugo, a draftee from Springfield, tossed five innings in relief last week to earn the victory. Could see uh, Justin on the mound here for Stark as well. For Bemidji. The Ox, the Blue Ox, once again in the big dance, feeling confident. This is the sixth trip to the tourney in the past eight seasons. They took third place in 2017. After the day with a 17-1 record, champions of Region 10 C. They got a first round bye, so this is their first game for them in the tourney. The Ox will lean on a solid lineup. Eight players batting over 300. Mitch Hendricks, Hunter Olson leading the way, both batting over 400. On the mound, player manager, uh, Cody Rutledge will turn to youngster Isaiah Bean. The 5'9 righty comes in with a perfect 4-0 record. His postseason ERA, a .76, nearly untouchable, has uh, been Bean. So the Stark lineup, and, and by the way, about 50 minutes late, we're starting this game. Uh, fields, obviously, on this side of the Metro, hammered last night by storms and rain. So we're about 50 minutes late to start here. Uh, things getting underway, our first matchup of the day here at Belfield. For Stark, Sean Mathewitz, second baseman will lead it off, then Mason Cox, the left fielder. Brandon Helgett playing shortstop, batting third. Adam Selner, as mentioned, he's the pitcher, will bat fourth. Zach Halla at third, bats fifth. Dylan Klein, uh, your right fielder, uh, batting sixth. Seventh will be Nick Labat. he's playing center. David Supernot, uh, your first baseman, batting eighth. And then uh, Tim Seifert, the catcher, had two hits last week for Stark. And he is the ninth hitter in the lineup, again, facing Isaac Bean. Stark um, has a distinction, facing every pretty much ace all the way through regions, and they face Maple Lake ace. Malchik last week. So they will not shy away from taking on strong pitching, and this lineup has been raking. Stark, the uh, runner-up is mentioned in Region 2C. Region 2C, only two spots in the state tournament this year. They lost their first game that had to come all the way through the loser's bracket. First pitch inside as Mathewitz takes ball one. Bean goes inside again, this time gets the call on the fastball, one and one the count. So Stark fills their lineup mostly from Sleepy Eye. Sleepy Eye supplying Three teams in the area for the majority of as Mathewitz out ahead of that one a bit down the third baseline, one and two the count. Leavenworth and of course the Sleepy Eye Indians amateur team. Sean Mathewitz, a former member of the Sleepy Eye Indians, a long time now amateur vet. That one a little low, tough take there. Sean hanging in there, two two the count. Bean, Bemidji State pitcher, 5'9 righty. He's working that inside corner, gets the call again. Mathewitz grimaces as he thought that one was a bit low. So Bean strikes out Mathewitz. Home plate ump by our Dave Gunderson, giving the inside pitch. Mike Lynch, our other ump on the base pass today. And he goes inside again on Mason Cox. Cops, Cox played his high school ball in the Duwalm area. I believe came over to Stark last year. And a welcome addition. Three hits in the opener against Maple Lake. 
Good young player here added to this Stark lineup. Low one count. And Cox all over that one, just past Hendricks at short. And Cox picking up right where he left off. Gets things started for Stark, one out, one on. I'm gonna bring up Brandon Helgett. Mentioned the Sleepy Eye area connections here for Stark. Many of them played at Sleepy Eye St. Mary's, a tremendous Class A baseball program. Produced uh, Sean Mathewitz, Brandon Helgen. And many more in this lineup. As Bean tosses over to keep an eye on Cox. So again, overcast day here. Perhaps rain in the forecast later tonight. Scheduled to play four games here now at Bell. Now it's three, I'm getting word. A lot of uh, moving parts here. As we had rain outs, obviously, Meesville. And uh, Dundas is 12 miles away from us here at Bellfield. Also had a rain out last night. And we'll have them all here on the Neighborhood Sports Network. That one wrapped to second to Hendricks, trying to turn a good scoop at first. So the double play takes care of Stark here in the first inning. Three up and three down. Bemidji coming to bat when we come back. Fast and flexible care. Count on the urgency room for expert medical care when you need it most. Visit us in person. Broken bone? chest pain? We're in Egan, Vadnais Heights, or Woodbury. Online care. Sinus infection? Strep throat? We offer easy online care. Major to minor, we can provide the level of care you need. Visit urgencyroom.com. Mobile check-in now available. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more. Welcome back to Belfield in Faribault. We're going to the bottom of the first here. The Bemidji Blue Ox coming up for the first time. They will uh, start us off with Mitch Hendricks, a shortstop. We saw him turn that DP. In the uh, top of the first inning, their uh, best hitter, Mitch, will lead things off. Connor McNallan bats second. Cody Rutledge will bat third. Then it's Colin Rutledge in the fourth spot, batting fifth. Caleb Meneke and Ben Toma. Turner Storm, Basil Zolke, and Hunter Olson will bring up uh, the Ox in the ninth spot. Again, a stellar, stellar lineup. Eight batters batting over 300. They will face the lefty, the crafty lefty, Adam Sellner, getting a second straight start. Stark started against Maple Lake uh, last week. Sounder six runs and eight hits in four innings. As mentioned, Justin uh, Haugo came in, the draftee from Springfield, to pitch the final five innings for Stark. Uh, Sellner. The veteran lefty. Slippy Eye area player on the mound. For Stark, and Mitch Hendricks will start us off here. Mitch. Former great football player as well at Bemidji. He and his brother and his dad, Troy, the head football coach up there in Bemidji for, he did two stints, Troy did. A couple state tournament appearances in football as Sellner gets one across, one and one the count. A little uh, inner family amateur trivia for you. Mitch Hendricks, first cousin of Sean Mathewitz of Stark. So how about that? Stark way down south in Brown County. As Hendricks hammers that one from Selner, but way out ahead in front of it. So one and two is still the count. So Sean and Mitch are close, close in age, close relationship. Talked a little bit about that before the game to Sean. He said, yeah, you're a pretty, pretty tight-knit family. Here they are, and he said the first time these two have ever faced each other in any sport. So kind of cool for the families here today. And Selder tries to get Hendricks on a 2-2 pitch. The chase does not, so the count is full. Goes outside again. Hendricks does not lay off this time. A little too close for him to take it. Fouls it to the right side. 
Hendricks just trying to get the timing here. And again, Sellner's crafty. He's not going to use speed to beat you. Look at that. Drops that one in. And Hendricks runs that one out, but Gunderson, home plate up fire, says you're out. So good start for Sellner. Always good to the best hitter in the lineup to start things off. Now it's McNallan playing second base for Bemidji. Started that double play at the top of the first. Down 0 1 quickly to Selner. Comes inside. A little out in front of that one. Mathewitz chases it in short right field. And Sean able to track that one down with ease. Two quick outs for Selner. Player manager Cody Rutledge playing center field for Bemidji. Now step in. So again, Bemidji 17 and 1 this year. They swept regions. Wearing those all blue, dark, dark blue unis. And Selner again has the timing off right now for the Blue Ox. Dark. The black jerseys, red trim, white pants. Red and black striping. Quickly 0-2 now on Rutledge. Well, you can see Rutledge there just saying, calm it down, try to get the timing here. Selner's ready to rock. Rutledge steps back into the box. Selner slings that one up there, and what an inning for Adam as he breezes through with two Ks. One, two, three, and we are scoreless after one in Faribault. You should feel good about where you and your money are headed. We can help you build a better relationship with your money starting with our free Simply Better checking account. When you open an account, you'll also receive a free gift. Get started today. Think Bank. Meet your money. Selner, the pitcher for Stark, will lead things off here, batting fourth in the lineup. Had a nice job there with this potent Bemidji lineup, the bottom half. So pitchers rule, at least in the first inning, between two really good hitting teams. Isaiah Bean, in the 5'9 righty, Bemidji State product pitcher. He's finished his freshman season at Bemidji. He has been stellar for the Blue Ox this season as that one is looped toward third. And getting under that and grabbing it with ease is Ben Toma. So one quick out here for Bean. And now it's Zach Hollow's turn. We mentioned Hollow, the best hitter in the lineup this year for Stark. He's a Sleepy Eye public grad. So again, mixed in a little bit between the two schools there in Sleepy Eye, but Zach also a key member of a public team that took second in state a couple years back. Plays at Bethel. He is quickly down 0-2 to Bean. Zach batting over 400 this year. We mentioned the team leader. It doubles, triples and home runs. He tries to get him to chase, one and two the count. One, 
Horseshoe pitch inside, wrapped toward third. Toma gets there off his glove. Holler runs well, and he'll be safe. We'll see what they decide to call that one. We're up here in the booth with the official scores. Tough play from Toma. For Toma going to his left. I think they're going to give Holla a hit, and they will. So that is Stark's second hit here. That'll bring up Dylan Klein, another Sleepy Eye Public graduate. Dylan did a stint in New Ulm in his amateur career. Now back with Stark. Takes the first pitch from Bean. And it's low. New Ulm Brewers, by the way, ran rough shot through Region 2 and the Tomahawk Conference this year. Big win, 10-run rule win yesterday. So Region 2C, 2-0 thus far in the tournament. We mentioned Region 2C had, they had a state bid taken away from them. The lack of performance up here in the state tournament. So both programs showing well in their first two contests. Very welcome to that region. Stark was the second team all year long in the Tomahawk, and then they got into region play, and as mentioned, fell in the first game, 4-3 to a really good Hanska team. Had to battle all the way back, their season on the brink a couple different times. They survived to make it here to the state tournament. So two and one the count now on Klein. Inside pitch, being loving to work that inside pitch. They had it working in the first inning. Three and one the count now on Klein. Spoils that one to the left side, full count. So one out, one on for the Longhorns. We're scoreless. I'll do my best to uh, keep these innings updated for you. Second inning, we produce and broadcast at the same time. Holla going and it's ball four. So two on and one out now for the Longhorns. Center fielder Nick Labatt come up now. Nick another Sleepy Eye St. Mary's graduate. Side pitch, 1-0 the count. Right down the pipe, 1-1. One and one. Team ERA for Bemidji, it's not just uh, being. Team ERA is 1.37, they've been stingy along with, as mentioned, that stellar lineup. Right now, Bean trying to work out of an early jam. One and two, the count. That one knocked toward third. Toma gloves this one. He'll go to first. Close play there. Hollow playing aggressive, coming home, and he's cut down. A double play again for Bemidji to end it. So aggressive play here by Stark. And they're not able to cash in. Bemidji, great defense. And that'll end the threat. So the Ox avoid giving up a run at the top of the second. We'll be right back. Live action, bottom two here in Belfield right after this. Fast and flexible care. Count on the urgency room for expert medical care when you need it most. Visit us in person. Broken bone, 
chest pain? We're in Egan, Vadnais Heights, or Woodbury. Online care. Sinus infection? Strep throat? We offer easy online care. Major to minor. We can provide the level of care you need. Visit urgencyroom.com. Mobile check-in now available. No scoring yet, but we've had some action here. Stark threatened in the top of the second inning. Runners on first and second with one out. Zakala with aggressive base running. So Stark, again, an athletic team. They'll play it aggressive. But credit to Bemidji is Tome at third. Played a nice play to get Nick Labatt at first. And then Hala trying to come home on the play from second. And he is cut down at home. So Bemidji not clustered at all defensively. Able to uh, hold Stark off the board. Bottom of the second, Adam Selner back out on the mound. He's working quickly, the crafty lefty. And he has four quick outs as Colin Rutledge just flew out to Brandon Helgen at shortstop. That'll bring up Caleb Menneke. Caleb rips that one right to Hala on the first pitch. So I'm not keeping track, but Selner's got to be around maybe 15 pitches right now, and he's got five outs. Do not have a pitch count. And now it's Ben Toma's turn. Seeing Ben, some action there at third. He's played well. Try to get his team off the schneid in the lineup here. See Selner, again, it's not the speed game for him. Got a little tail action on his pitch. He's just going to do everything he can to keep this Bemidji lineup's timing off. They have squared him up a couple times. but Stark also a solid defensive team, as we've seen already. One-on-one -on -one count, by the way, way outside. Hi. Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more.
top of the third inning now. Start back to the plate. Top of the third inning now. Stark at the plate with David Supernot, two and two count. Apologize for our microphone issues here. We're trying to get things figured out as we are in the top of the third inning. Very nice. For Walters, the catcher number 11, Jim Spencer. And we've got one out, Isaiah Bean back at the plate. Mic check one, two, three, mic check one, two, three. We apologize for our microphone situation here. We work out some technical difficulties. Seem to be up and running right now. So three, two count, we've got top of the third inning, zero, zero score. One out, Stark at the plate. It's Tim Seifert, the catcher at the dish. Both pitchers, Adam Selner for Stark, Isaiah Bean for Bemidji. Been great here early on. Two hits for Stark, Bemidji held hitless so far. Seifert skies that one in the infield. Calling for it is Hendricks, and that one drifted back on him. A slight breeze kind of kicked up there when that one was in the air. Not an easy play, but as we've seen, Bemidji pretty stellar on the defensive side. So let's recap it here. Again, the pitchers are uh, ruling the day so far. And Sean Nathowitz will come to the plate. Sean, the leadoff batter. Struck out looking at his first time. Where he had Mathewitz the last time, and that's that inside pitch goes right back to it. Mathewitz skies that one towards center, and Rutledge under it, hauls it in. Another one, two, three inning for Bean. So Bemidji will come up in the third, try to solve Adam Selder. We'll be back right after. And again, that one, two, three inning is brought to you by the Hayes Company. You should feel good about where you and your money are headed. We can help you build a better relationship with your money, starting with our free Simply Better checking account. When you open an account, you'll also receive a free gift. Get started today. Think Bank. Meet your money. Bottom three, Belfield in Faribault. We're cruising along here. Again, an, about a 50-minute delay to our start time here. It's the great field crew. Chris Reavers and his crew did a great job here getting uh, the field and concessions and everything ready here. They got dumped on like 
Dundas did. And of course, Meesville as well. Rough night last night, more rain this morning. And pretty much had to dig out home plate and redo it. So uh, on the right-handed batter's box in particular. So they did a great job to get us moving along here. And so far, we've got a pitcher's duel. Bemidji does not have a hit yet against Stark lefty Adam Sellner. And this is Turner Storm, the designated hitter. Now one and one to count. Two hits for Stark, none for Bemidji. Stark did threaten in the second inning. And actually, uh, Bemidji had two double plays in the uh, more traditional sense in the first inning and in the second inning. Aggressive base running, cutting down Zach Halla at home. And again, he's just got the timing off. That one skied, and Seifert lines that one up. Timmy getting under it, grabbing that one. So one quick out again here now, and Basil Zolke will come to the plate. Team leading 16 RBIs. Today is the first pitch number 31, Basil Zolke. Take a lefty. We got the dark on dark jerseys here. Always fun. You know, Town Ball Uni trackers probably keeping track of that one. I guess it's it's not a sin as long as the colors are still different. The, the blue ox and the blue jerseys, but they're very, very dark blue. Head to toe. And Zulke has dark blue cleats as well. He does have a little distinction here with the, the lighter blue, the royal blue, if you will, gloves and ankle guard. Outside pitch. Gunderson's been given that, that side of the plate so far here. So quickly, 0-2 on Zolke. Selner delivers, and Zolke's helmet comes off as he swings through as Selner is in cruise control. We're gonna strike out for Adam. Well, Hunter Olson, the number nine hitter, will come to the dish. Quickly tosses in, strike one. Strike two. One, two count now. Trying to get him to chase does not. One and two the count. Again, Bemidji is trying to time Selner here, way out in front of that one. Count remains one and two, two out. And a overcast on the cool side day here in Faribault. One, two pitch, just a bit high. You can see Olsen hanging on for dear life on that one. Check his swing as well, two, two. Outside, count is full. Comes back in and again, rip down the third base side. Count remains full now. Olsen just gets a piece of that one to stay alive. Again, the 3-2 pitch, swung on, and I guess he got a piece of that one as well. It goes off of the shin guard of Seifert. So Olsen hanging tough here. Again, the 3-2 pitch outside, ball four. So Bemidji with its first base runner, and what an at-bat by Hunter Olsen. I'll work that one out. The lineup turns over now. Again, the top hitter in Bemidji's lineup. Mitch Hendricks get a second look at Selner. So things going well for Selner. We'll see Hendricks, who struck out, by the way, his first time on. 
Right down the middle, 0-1. Mentioned uh, Mitch, football star, along with his brother, playing for their dad, Troy, up at Bemidji. Mitch, they went on to play at Gustavus. Great career as a quarterback there. Originally at St. John's, and then transferred over to Gustavus. Now getting it done here in the lineup for Bemidji, but he's down 0-2 here. Two outs, one on. Selner delivers. Helgett at short to Mathewitz at second. And Adam Selner continues to cruise. We are through three zeros on the board at Bellfield. All season long, you've gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run! Diamonds that define hundreds of communities. Town Ball binds together our passion for baseball and our hometowns. And on September 10th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support Town Ball. The Twins host the Guardians at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the champions will be honored in a ceremony at Town Ball Tavern. And all Town Ballers will be invited down to the field for a special pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. Field Scallon back, has it measured, that's it! Air Freight Unlimited, your Class A state champions! For tickets to the Minnesota Twins, tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 10th, visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. Originally an 11 o'clock scheduled first pitch when the brackets came out. We got started at just before noon, and we are now cruising along into the fourth inning here. We had Stark and Bemidji, so again, two just tremendous lineups. And it's a pitcher's duel. In fact, Bemidji held hitless their first uh, time through the lineup. Stark has two hits, they have threatened. And number two hitter, Mason Cox, will come up. Mason hit a single in the first inning. Top four here in the neighborhood, Neighborhood Sports Network. Our rebranding here that we've unveiled for the State Amateur Baseball Tournament, formerly PrepSpotlight.tv. We're happy to once again partner and broadcast the State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Tremendous three weekends here toward the end of the summer. These teams battle it out. This is round two. Winner moves on to the Sweet 16 the, to play the winner of our next game up here at Belfield. That'll be the Dumont Saints, who received a first round bye, taking on the Richmond Royals. It's a rematch, by the way, of last year's first round matchup, won by Dumont as Cox skies that one high to right. The balls are flying out there today. Seen Stark hit it out to the outfield a couple times. A little bit of carry. Hunter Olsen sticks with that one, so one up, one out. The shortstop number five, Brandon Helgut. And Brandon Helgut, the number three hitter in the lineup, comes up. Brandon hit into a double play his first time up. Part of the stellar defense that we've seen here from Bemidji. No one's in there for a strike. Brandon Helgut, the tall lefty. A short stop for Stark. It was all over that one, but a little early. So timing for these hitters haven't caught up to the pitchers yet here. If anything, we've seen most batters get out ahead of it. Now 0-2 the count on Helgett. Well, get chases the outside, but able to hang. Count remains 0-2. Goes back to the outside, but low, and again, Helgit hangs. 15th overall appearance in the tournament for Stark. They were a tourney mainstay in the 1970s and 1980s. Speaking of Helgits, back then the 
entire roster of pretty much Helgets. A couple years there where the all nine players in the starting lineup were Helgets. So Brandon carrying on the Helget tradition here for the Longhorns. One and two the count. That one hit toward the first base side. Big Basil over there to scoop it up. Throws it back to Bean, still one and two. That one goes off of Bean, scooped up at second. And again, Bemidji's defense playing well here. McNallan hangs with that one. Give it G4. Well, Bean obviously involved in that one as it nicks off his glove. Right to McNallan, so two outs for Selner. Selner flew out his first time up to lead off the second inning for the Longhorns. Back-to-back -back lefties in the lineup here for Stark. Bean working that corner again. One and one to count. Goes right back to it. That one ripped to short. Hendricks scoops. Easy throw to first. One, two, three inning for Bean. Go to the bottom of the fourth. Zeros on the board. Bottom four, Bemidji coming to the plate, still looking for its first hit. Connor McNallan, the second baseman, will lead things off. He flew out to Mathewitz at second, his first time up. So again, trying to solve Adam Selner here, the crafty lefty for Stark. Really locked in here in the opening innings. movement Selner's pitches and you can see McNally take that long walk out as he fouls that one back to the netting. One on one to come. Selner tails another one in there. Oh and a ball. Much of the chagrin of the Stark folks down below. So two and one the count. It'd be tough if Selner can't get that pitch. That one is nubbed toward third. Hall is gonna have to make a play. The scoop the throw and Halla made that one look easy. The 
Cody Rutledge, player manager, center fielder extraordinaire now batting for the Blue Ox. Again, bottom four. Blue Ox looking for their first hit. As one and know the count now on Cody. He struck out in the first inning. That one high from Selner. So if they things continue to progress as they have been. Playing into uh, Dusty Mangan's hands here as he's got a great draftee, Justin Haugo, who you would assume takes some innings here as we progress. Should they need it? Obviously, Selner cruising right now, although a 3-1 count here to Rutledge comes in. And Rutledge fouls that one away, full count. Inside pitch, swung out and missed. From 3-0 down to the count, Selner battles back with three straight strikes. And for the second time, he strikes out Rutledge. And that'll bring up Colin Rutledge. Colin, the left fielder, flew out. Short his last time up. There's that corner where Gunderson's been giving that side of the plate to both pitchers, but a little bit low, want to know the count. That one hit toward Mathewitz at second. Sean moves over, sets throws, one, two, three innings. Selner through four, has yet to surrender a hit. Here's the pitch. Swung on, a little tapper to the right side. Pitcher makes the play, goes to the plate, and he's safe. He was off the plate. They don't get the force play. An acrobatic play by the pitcher. One for three with a walk, a single and an RBI, and he'll slice one down the left field line. It'll be a fair ball. It'll go to the corner. Geislinger with a two-out RBI double and a three spot here in the bottom of the eighth inning for Watkins. He sets the one all. Swung on a line drive into center field, a base hit. Coming around third is Dolan. Here comes the throw to the plate. It is up the line. And Avon walks him off. An RBI single by Ryan Jansen. Jansen, the runner at first, is kept. And a hard hit ball towards left field. A diving attempt unsuccessful by Art. It's going to go all the way to the fence. Johnson will score. Kept being waved in. The relay throw to the plate is not in time. An RBI double. In fact, a two-run double for Hadley. Move on to the fifth inning here at Bell Field. A look there at some Class C highlights from last week. That was, uh, you saw Stark's dramatic win against Maple Lake. The play at the plate. Stark um, scoring nine runs in that game. Bemidji a stellar offense. And right now we've got a total of two hits, both from the Longhorns. We're in the top of the fifth inning. And we're scoreless, a pitcher's duel. And Zach Hollis steps to the plate. Holland made a nice play at third last inning. And Zach singled and then was doubled up trying to come home on that number to third. He, aggressive play by Holland. Great defense by Bemidji. That is what has kept the horns off the board here in this one. Hollis showed bunt and pulls it back. One and one the count. One pitch from Bean. Going oh, inside. Now three and one the count. Stark would love to have Hall on the base pass. He saw the aggressiveness. He also had a, not a full count, mind you, but an attempted steal. So he took off anyway. As that one is sky to the right side. Zolke drifting over. Basil snags it. Right 
Dylan, number one, Dylan Klein. Dylan Klein now comes up to the plate. Dylan walked his last time up. And that following the call a single to start Stark's threat. He rips that one right up the middle. Hendricks can't get there. So Klein sees one pitch in this at bat from Bean, and he's on base. Now three hits on the day for Stark. Nick Labatt will come up. Nick hit that ground, that short ground ball to third, which Toma then went to first before uh, Sulky threw it home to double off Hollow last time up. And Bean checking in on Klein as you figure Stark game like this. See if they try to get something going here. High and inside, one to know the count. You know, Gunderson giving the other side of the plate now to Bean. So one and one the count. Again, checks on Klein, close play there. Base pass, path umpire Mike Lynch all over that one. Klein has Bean's attention, one, one count, one out. High and inside again. Again, checking on Klein. Toward third and a foul ball. Played on umpire Gunderson has to make that call. And that one just on the outside of the bag when it flying by Toma had no shot at it. Klein was trucking around second. So two and two the count now. Klein back to first, one out. Reaching for that one another. Toma's gonna have to make another play here. Takes the Smart play to first and rips it over there to get Labatt. So two outs now, Klein moving down to second. Ben's been busy over there at third. Dave Supernaut will now come up. And give uh, David the, prop, the props. His first time up, we were having technical difficulties at that time, another St. Mary's grad, another really good athlete out of that program. Swung on and missed, 0-1. Super not first baseman for the Longhorns. Same pitch. And Supernaut quickly down 0 and 2. Batters pressing a bit in these situations, just trying to generate something here. Offense has been at a premium here. But again, Stark for the second time now with a runner on second base. 0 2 pitch. Low and outside. Bean tries to get him to chase. Supernaut holds. Good job at the dish for Menike. Keep that one in front of him. One and two the count. Klein holding at second. Swung on and popped up in the infield. Zolke calls off Bean. 
And Basil has it. Three out, so Bemidji shuts down another stark threat. We go to the bottom of the fifth, 0-0 from Belfield in Faribault. All season long, you've gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run. Diamonds that define hundreds of communities. Town Ball binds together our passion for baseball and our hometowns. And on September 10th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support Town Ball. The Twins host the Guardians at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the champions will be honored in a ceremony at Town Ball Tavern. And all Town Ballers will be invited down to the field for a special pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. Field scaling back, has it measured, that's it! Air Freight Unlimited, your Class A state champions! For tickets to the Minnesota Twins, tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 10th, visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. Grounds crew, grounds crew comes out to spruce things up. We're through five and a half here. Ian Faribault, again, a shout out to the grounds crew for getting this field ready. In all three locations dealing with that here today. But they got after it at, at one time. I know there were talks of pushing it way back when it rained heavily again here this morning. But for them to get this thing ready, we got it in just 50 minutes after the uh, original scheduled first pitch. So great job for the field crew here in Faribault as Adam Seller goes back to work. That one looked off for ball one. Medici, the catcher, is up, rips it to left, and it's hanging and caught. Mason Cox hangs with that one, so Selner yet to surrender a hit, by the way. And yeah, we're allowed to say it on the broadcast. Now, the Stark folks maybe not bringing it up. But we can mention it. Yet to surrender a hit here. Doesn't look like Bemidji's best shot, actually. But again, ball's carrying here today. As Ben Toma will step in, Ben grounded out his first time up. Been busy at third. That one sky to the right side. It'll get out of play. One and one the count. Another rip. This one to center. Going back and near the wall, tracking it down. Great defense on display again as Labatt stuck with that one. And he hits the wall right after he catches it. Not catching his breath out there, but perhaps if you're Bemidji, they're feeling a little bit better about things now. Maybe timing up Selner. Two big rips here and deep fly balls. But nonetheless, two quick outs for Selner as he quickly goes right back to work. Turner Storm, the DH, flew out his first time up. This one toward third. Halla dives. He's not going to have a play at first. The so storm is on. The question is, is it a hit or an error? It's going to be an error. So... You have to think maybe if Holla lets that one go through, Helgit was right behind him. He could have set and threw to first. But Holla, as he always is, playing aggressive out there. Made a nice play to smother it. But Bemidji has a base runner. Their second base runner in the game. Hunter Olsen, who's on deck, walked his first time up. And now it's Basil Zolke who has yet to solve Selner. Swings and misses. He's quickly down 0-2. Adam not phased. Goes right back to work. 0-2 pitch. Runner goes. Swung on and missed. Three pitches. And Selner takes care of Zolke. He is taking care of this Blue Ox lineup. No hits yet for the Ox. We're through five zeros on the board at Belfield. 
Fast and flexible care. Count on the urgency room for expert medical care when you need it most. Visit us in person. Broken bone, chest pain? We're in Egan, Vadnais Heights, or Woodbury. Online care. Sinus infection, strep throat? We offer easy online care. Major to minor, we can provide the level of care you need. Visit urgencyroom.com. Mobile check-in now available. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more. Out of the sixth inning, Ian Faribault. This game just about one hour old. We have a total of three hits, one error, no runs. All three hits, Stark Longhorns. And it's Tim Seifert, the catcher, number nine hitter in the order, will come up. Tim fists that one towards second. Nolan doesn't have to move. The lineup turns over now, Sean Mathewitz, who is 0 for 2. They strike out in a fly out. And Sean, one of the top players here for the Horns, plays second base. He shows bunt and pulls it back, ball one. Mentioned Sean First Cousins with Mitch Hendricks, a great athletic family. Sean, 2,000 points in basketball up until this year, the leading scorer at Slippy St. Mary's High School. As he wraps that one to third, Toma, low throw. But he's got a cannon over there. And he throws out Mathewitz. Sean now 0 for 3. Two quick outs for Isaiah Bean, Mason Cox, who has a single. One of three hits for the Horns will come up next. count. You figure you look at, at this on paper, two teams coming together, obviously not really familiar with one another. 1-1 uh, one, one pitch, sky high in the infield. Toma calling everybody off right on the bag. He snags it. A quick 1-2-3 inning for Bean. He cruises through that top of the six. Bemidji again will try to solve Selner in the bottom half. We'll keep it here. As mentioned, uh, these two teams not super familiar with one another. And on paper, you're looking at a game with two very strong lineups. Obviously, pitching is uh, really great as well. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. But Stark, nine runs last week. It's a really good Maple Lake squad. But here we are in a full-blown pitcher's duel. Adam Selner, the lefty, back out for his sixth inning of work. He'll face Hunter Olson, and then a roll to the top of the order with Hendricks and crew. Thank you so much for joining us here at our rebrand, NSPN.TV, the Neighborhood Sports Network. It's $2.08 per month. Subscribe and to add to our lineup as usual, full-blown high school lineup every year. 
Of course, the State Amateur Baseball Tournament has $2.08 per month. Annual subscription of 25 bucks. We're proud to keep bringing you great amateur and high school action throughout the state of Minnesota. And by the way, Selner took care of Olsen. So it's back to Hendricks now, top of the lineup. Hendricks to third. Hala. A lot of pops that one over to first. And two quick outs again for Selner. McNallan will come up. McNallan is 0 for 2. He flew out in the first, grounded out in the fourth. That one looked off again a bit high. Towards second, is it going to find a hole? Mathewitz dives, but it's way out of his reach, and Bemidji's off the schneid. Their first hit of the contest. A two-out bleeder through the right side. But it counts in the scorebook as a single, so McNally's on. McNallan's on, excuse me. And we'll see if that sets anything up here for player manager Cody Rutledge. Cody is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts against Selner. And now a little bit low, you can tell Selner wanted that one. Perhaps, perhaps things tightening up a bit on the mound. Well, now Gunderson will give him that outside pitch, one and one the count. Way out ahead of that one. One and two. Way outside, two and two the count. short and that one gets down and picked up a little speed when it hit the dirt. I think Helgen was hoping that he'd have another bounce to maybe backhand that one and make a play but back to back hits now. And the Blue Ox piecing something together a two out rally for the first time multiple runners on base here and now it's Colin Rutledge's turn. Colin flew out his first time up grounded out his last time up. Selner pitches outside, 1 0 the count. That one tails over the plate, 1 and 1. Midgey with a couple singles right through the infield as that one sky to right. Klein sizes it up. And squeezes the glove. Selner works out of the jam. So Bemidji off the schneid with two singles. But Selner works out of it. And we remain 0-0 after six in Faribault. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more.
So Bemidji threatening in the bottom of the sixth inning, two two-out singles off of Adam Sellner, their first two hits of the contest. But Sellner gets out of it. They fly out to right field. And now the heart of the order coming up for Stark. Brandon Helgett will lead us off. Brandon 0 for 2. A lot of offers in both lineups. Only five hits total to go around. Stark has had a runner on second base twice. But Isaiah Bean, a stellar right-hander for Bemidji, able to work out of it both times. Now facing Helgett. Brandon has shown some power this year. Two home runs on the season. He delivers the 0-1 pitch. Quickly 0-2 now on Helgett. <laughs> Outside, and Helgett chases quickly down it's on strikes. And Bean goes right after Helgett. And now it's Selder's turn. Adam also 0 for 2. Adam on the season, a 385 hitter, by the way. Walked 15 times. And that pitch high, 1 and 0. That one right up the middle, so right on cue, Sounder. Time's up, Bean. And the Stark Longhorns pitcher. Trying to get things started here. One out and now one on. And here comes Hala. Again, 4.05 in the regular season for Zach. Dusty Magan coming out. Pinch runner action. We're going to have Arian Sines sighting for the Stark Longhorns. So signs just a high schooler by the way. He will come into Ron. So Arian a athletic player, sleepy eye public, will be a senior this year. Taking some time off from training for his senior year of football to come here and join the Longhorns in the state tournament. And signs Gets the lead at first with a one out and Zach Halla at the plate. Signs dives back, Bean. Been all over these stark runners when they've been on. Halla, by the way, one for two. He singled his first time up. We mentioned the 405 average and the leader in home run doubles and triples for Stark. And that one just a bit behind it. Skies at high to right. And Hunter Olsen under it, four out number two. So now the hottest hitter of the day for Stark is Dylan Klein. He's been on twice, walked his first time up, singled and reached second base back in the uh, fifth inning. Stark looking for it. Dylan to come through in the clutch here. Ian Arian signs. Pinch running for pitcher Adam Selner who singled right back up the middle. The fourth hit of the day for Stark. But can they take advantage? Bean inside pitch. Gunderson looks that one off. So 1-0 oh the count on Klein. Oh, he reaches for that one. Tough play for Hendricks, but he's got it in his glove and throws Klein out. So one single, but no harm. Bean works through it again, heading to the bottom of the seventh at Bell Field. 0-0, zero, zero, our score. A great second round matchup here in the Class C bracket. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live
The pitchers do a wages on here at Bellfield in Faribault. Adam Sellner back out for his seventh inning of work to start. He's got to face Caleb Meneke, so Sellner through five innings, didn't even surrender a hit. He's actually five and two thirds, and then back-to-back -back singles for Bemidji. But Sellner able to get out of it. And he's down in the count here. Two balls, no strikes to Meneke. He's flown out twice. And he gets that outside corner, two and one the count. One update going on, Broughton and Isanti. Class C bracket, that's in the third inning. That game also scoreless. Well, it's maybe the weather holding down the lineups here. Pitcher friendly atmospheres throughout the state tournament, at least so far. Two and two the count. As Manike was able to hang. Stellner again battling back. We've seen him do that a couple times here. Behind in the count, and then comes right back in inside. Pitch called third strike. Six strikeouts now for Sellner. Ben Toma, the third baseman, steps up, takes strike one. Ben grounded out his first time up in the second, flew out his last time up in the fifth inning. That one skied the left side. Helgett drifting out into left field. He's not called off. Amazing. It looked like Cox was going to come in and, and probably should have called Helgett off, but Brandon does a great job. One thing that this, this Stark team has a lot of height. You can see these tall, lanky kids with uh, Halla, Helgett, Mathewitz, all over, well over six feet tall. And Helgett needed every inch of it there to reach up and snag that one. So two outs, Turner Storm, the DH. Turner reached on an error his last time up. Sellner going for that outside corner. Kind of looks that one in. On and off, he's gotten that call. Perhaps that one a little high. One and one the count. That one ripped to the left side, but way foul. You see the Dumont Saints, our next team up. Lined up on that left field fence. Watch that ball ricochet right in front of him. One and two the count. Sellner goes way outside trying to get Storm to chase. Right back to Sellner, and he just misses that one. In fact, looks at his glove like, are you kidding me? I had it. That one zipped right past him. Probably nipped the lacing on the bottom of his glove. The storm is on for the second time. The third hit now for the Ox. A two-out single, and now it's Basil Zoki, who is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Sellner's had his number thus far. Inside pitch, curving it over, strike one. This has not been a friendly matchup for Big Basil. Well, he liked that one, but again, can't time it. 0-2 quickly now. Sellner's throwing maybe 10 pitches to Zolke here in this game. Pretty much all strikes. Another 0-2 delivery here. Outside pitch, can't get him to chase. Good idea, one and two the count. A little extra juice on that one from Selner. It's changing things up a bit, but it's two and two now. No one nubbed off the plate foul. Storm was flying towards second base. 
On a 2-2 pitch, trying to get some action on the base pass. And we're going to test Seifert. Now that one ripped into left, and it's going to drop for extra bases. Storm is running. Are they going to hold him? Yes, they'll hold him at third. And actually, Zolke will hold at first. So a single for Basil, and the runners at first and third, the biggest threat thus far for the Blue Ox with number nine hitter Hunter Olsen coming up. Olsen is 0 for 1 with a walk in this game. Now Dusty Mangan's going to come out. We'll see what he, if there's a decision to be made here, or is he just going to talk things over? There's a lot of people down by the bullpen. I don't see anybody throwing down there. But again, there are a lot of bodies over there. And we've got the next two teams piling in here, Dumont and Richmond. It's a quick talk. Selner will stay out there. Runners at first and third, two outs. A huge moment in this game. The Mangan's going to stay with the horse here. Sounder, who has been brilliant, is going to have to work his way out of it now, even on the scoreboard, four hits apiece. And worth mentioning, through five innings, Sounder had not surrendered a hit. Now Bemidji, their third time through the lineup, trying to make something happen. Pinch runner, by the way, at first base. That's J.D. Condos who takes second easily. So now second and third. And he leads into a hit, and what are they going to say here? Oh, okay. Olsen said, no problem. I leaned into that one. <laughs> Saw playing uh, the big leagues, New York Yankees. Anthony Rizzo, if you remember, had that play recently. And the umpire called that. It did not go so well for the umpiring crew as Rizzo was living. This time, Olsen City, I leaned into it. So dead ball, apparently. And that one dribbled down to third, so we're still waiting on an updated count. One and two. One and two the count. Big spot here, Stark crowd comes alive. One, two pitch, swung on, ripped towards short. Helgut stays with it, throws it to first. And Selner gets out of the jam. A fist pump from Adam. And we're through seven at Belfield, 0-0 zero, zero our score. Class C Tournament Classic here at Belfield, second round. Midgey Blue Ox got to buy their first in the first round start, got by Maple Lake. Now they're matching up here in the round of 32, and it's been a good one. 0-0, zero, zero, each team with four hits. There's Nick Labad toward third, and it gets by Van Toma. He's going to hustle and make the turn, and he'll make it as a little bit of stumble there. In left field. Remember, it's still wet out there because we haven't had a lot of balls in play. You forget, it's still pretty slick, and Colin Rutledge got to that ball with just a little slippage. Allows Nick Labatt to hustle for a double to start things off here for Stark. So how about that? A full-blown pitcher's duel. Again, Adam Sellner for Stark. Five and two-thirds hitless, and he just, in the seventh inning, got out of a jam. First and third with two outs, Bemidji had it. And Selner got out of that one by inducing a ground ball to short. And now, leading off the top of the eighth for start, Nick Labatt on one pitch, rips a double down the left field line. Showing bunt, David Supernot pulls it back, ball one. Now we have action in the Stark bullpen as well.
Supernaut. Swung on and knocks that one back to the netting. Trying to solve Isaiah Bean here. And Bean, five foot nine righty, pitches for Bemidji State. A sub one ERA for Bemidji. Supernaut shows Bunt, pulls it back. Everybody on Bemidji wanted that call. Ball is low, ball two, two and one. Now things getting tense here in the late innings. Rusty Mangan pacing a bit down there at third. A great job managing this squad. Zalke way in at first base, thinking Bunt, and that one to center. And again, balls are carrying a bit here. Oh, Labatt's got to get back. That throw was right on him. There's <laughs> Rutledge out there. Man, that was hit pretty much right to Cody. And Supernaut did not hit it all that hard, but again, the ball is carrying here. So he gave it a good run, but one out nonetheless for the number nine hitter, Tim Seifer. Tim with two big hits from that nine hole last week against Maple Lake, you know. And Mangan is saying, Come through clutch again here. Swung on and driven to the right side. Zalke's going over to check on it. And it hits the, the uh, tent over there where they're serving what will be our lunch and dinner as we're capped out here at Belfield. First of three games scheduled here, Belfield. Owen won the count. Labatt leadoff second. That one up the middle, it's gonna get through. Labatt's gonna turn it on. Rutledge, he's gonna come home. Zolke cuts it and Stark has a one nothing lead. So it's Seifert with another big hit out of the nine hole, the Longhorns catcher up the middle. Labatt was watching that one and Mangan was waving him through. And now it's Sean Matowitz's turn. Back to the top of the lineup. Matowitz comes up swinging there on Bean now. Sean a little disappointed with himself. He knocks that one foul to the third side. Everybody wants in on now for the Horns. 0-1 count on Matowitz. One out, Seifert on first. The Horns break through for a one nothing lead. That one up the middle, Chopper, great play by Toma to second. McMillan to first, and Zolke cannot scoop it. And now Mathewitz coming up limping a bit. What a club over there by Toma. And they get the out at second. Fielder's choice for Mathewitz, and we'll see if he's okay as he comes up limping a bit. That'd be a big blow to Stark. He's gonna shake that one off, and now it's Mason Cox. So Mason again has a single way back in the first inning as Bean checks on Mathewitz at first. Mason batted 379 in the regular season. Again, one of their Top players, three hits last week against Maple Lake. And Bean going for that inside pitch, does not get the call. Oh, and knocked to the right side, will it stay in play? Oh no. And Zalke giving his all over there, good. Hustle down that right side. A one and one the count now on Cox. So what does Stark do? As far as the pitching is concerned, Selner's obviously been brilliant here today, but has had to dance out of a couple jams here the last couple innings. Cox 
Cox would love to add to the lead here. Two outs, one and one to count. Mathewitz at first. And that one, kick, it's gonna hang up for Rutledge and it's out number three. So Bean gets out of it, but not before Stark strikes. The Horns take a one nothing lead into the bottom of the eighth. Fast and flexible care. Count on the urgency room for expert medical care when you need it most. Visit us in person. Broken bone, chest pain? We're in Egan, Vadness Heights, or Woodbury. Online care. Sinus infection, strep throat? We offer easy online care. Major to minor, we can provide the level of care you need. Visit urgencyroom.com, mobile check-in. Score update from Dundas, 1-0 Brown over Isanti in the fourth. Back here at Bell Field, bottom of the eight, Bemidji top of the lineup facing Adam Sellner. It's Mitch Hendricks, again, the top hitter in the lineup, batting over 400 this year. But Hendricks, like many in the Blue Ox lineup, has been flummoxed so far by Sellner. He is 0 for 2, golfs that one to left, it hangs, Cox has a read on it. Squeezes it, one out in the eighth inning. Now it's McNallan who singled his last time up. The first hit of the game for the Blue Ox, in courtesy of Connor McNallan, as he just bled that one through the right side. His last time up, that one way inside. So Adam Sellner out for his eighth inning of work. Again, he surrendered four Bemidji hits. Five and two-third hitless innings before McNallan started things off back in the sixth inning, the first hit of the game for the Ox, later stranded at second. And he was all over that one, rips it to the right side, now to play two and one the count. So this game scoreless until the top of the eighth inning, Stark, sparked by Nick Labatt, doubled on the left side, and then Tim Seifert, the number nine hitter, a single up the middle to score Labatt. The Horns clinging to this one nothing lead, 2-2 count. That one to the right side, that's a tough play for Klein. He drifts over and actually makes it look easy. Again, the ball carrying, when it comes off the bat, that looked like it was, had a chance to get out there quickly. Perhaps it skipped down, but it just hung up there for Klein. So again, Selner with two quick outs. And now it's Cody Rutledge. Rutledge also singled his last, time, his last time up as he knocked it through the left side just past Helgen at short. So before that, he had struck out twice. And Selner off speed and then some. And Rutledge in a hole 0-1. Trying to work that inside corner, one and one to count. Fouled straight back, one and two. to the count. Sellner again trying to get him to chase. Nick Adam a little fired up as he maybe let that one go a little too far outside. Now the count is full. Rutledge trying to get on base here. Bemidji trying to rally. 
And that pitch is high. So Rutledge, in back to bat at bats, finds his way to first base. And now it's Colin Rutledge. Cody on first. Colin blown out twice, also grounded out here today. Big lead at first for Cody. As pretty much Stark is not going to pay much attention to him, it looks like. Sounder jumps ahead. 0-1. Oh, well, there they've got him. Hulgett runs him back. Supernaut. Now gets rid of it. Here's Mathewitz as Rutledge falls down. And he's out. No, they're gonna they're gonna give him first. They're gonna call him back on the field here and say it was interference. They're gonna say it was interference. Wow. What a big play here. As Rutledge was completely hung out to dry. So now we have Tim Seifer talking things over with home plate umpire Gunderson to say uh, it's, a little, it's a little argument there, maybe to buy his pitcher a little time, but now Sounder's saying, don't worry about it, let's go. Let's get this rolling, and, and Sounder wants to know the count now, I think is probably the big thing. Just try to reset things here, and Adam try to stay locked in out there on the mound, so... Again, Rutledge hung out to dry. They had him, and he fell down. They said defensive interference is the call and awarded second base. It's my advantage here sitting right next to the official scores. They just feed me this great information. So anyway, the count is 0-1. So now it's 0-1 to count, two outs. Bemidji, the tying run on second base after all that. And Sounder has to go back to work to try to get Rutledge, and it's a fair ball. This will tie the game. Flying. Throws it into Mathewitz, so there you go. Bemidji fired up as they're able to score on the double from Colin Rutledge, driving in Cody Rutledge, and that was after that defensive interference call. Awarding Cody second base. Wow. So there you go. Stark was out of the inning, and instead, We've got a 1-1 game. So put that down as you can see that coming from a mile away, really. Stark, they were halfway off the field. And outside pitch, 1-0 the count now to Caleb Meneke, the catcher. Caleb flown out twice, struck out his last time up. Sonner gets the strike call, one and one, but now the go-ahead run for the Ox is Colin Rutledge. Man, he ripped that one down the right side. That one right back up the middle. Middle, can Mathewitz get there? He does, high throw, and Supernaut gets his foot down, and now Meneke hits the dirt. So they get out of it. Sonner gets out of the jam. But it's one to one, heading to the ninth inning. High drama here at Bell Field in Faribault, Class C, second round action live on NSP and TV. Fast and flexible care. Count on the urgency room for expert medical care when you need it most. Visit us in person. Broken bone, chest pain, we're in Egan, Vadnais Heights, or Woodbury. Online care. Sinus infection? Strep throat? We offer easy online care. Major to minor. We can provide the level of care you need. Visit urgencyroom.com. Mobile check-in now available. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more.
Okay, top nine. We are tied at one. And what an eighth inning. So Stark finally able to push one across. The clutch RBI single from Tim Seifert. And Stark then thought they were out of a jam in the uh, bottom of the eighth inning, but a defensive interference call awarded Cody Rutledge second base. And then Cullen with an RBI single to tie us at one apiece uh, heading here into the ninth and leading off for Stark with a single is Brandon Helgett. So the third hitter in the lineup, Brandon Helgett, starts us off with a single. So Brandon was 0 for 3, able to figure things out. And now what is Cody Rutledge, who plays center field, the player manager running in here. And will we see a pitcher ch uh, pitching change here? Because that was the seventh hit now for Stark off of Isaiah Bean. Bean and Selner battling it out. Speaking of Selner, he'll step up to the dish now. So Selner, one of the top averages in the regular season. He had a single his last time up. So again, Routledge just wanted to talk things over, make sure everything everybody's on the same page. Bean will stay in the game. Obviously, you want to ride your guys here. Both these pitchers have been awesome. So now, nobody out and one on. Stark trying to get another rally together here in the top of the night. As Bean goes right back to that corner, gets the call, 0-1 the count. Selner has been great on the mound and has the one hit, wants to keep it going here. And he does it. Up the middle. Ho oh, Hendricks makes a great attempt at it, but can't get it. Can't love it, I should say. Knocks it down. McNullen gets over there. He can't make a play. Back-to-back -back singles for Stark. First and second. Nobody out. So how about that? And now here comes Rutledge again from center field. So Cody calling for time, and will he make the change now? It looks like he will. So pitching change coming for Bemidji. Stark ra on a rally here, one in, or first and second with nobody out. We'll introduce you to our new pitcher when we come back. PrepSpotlight.tv made history in 2020 by live streaming every game of the Town Ball State Tournament. History is happening again. PrepSpotlight.tv has been great, but it's becoming greater. Introducing NSPN.tv. The Neighborhood Sports Network launches this week with end-to-end -end coverage of a fantastic Minnesota sports tradition, Town Ball. See every game for a new fan-friendly monthly fee. Join for Town Ball State Tournament games, then stay for the high school and college seasons. NSPN.TV will provide subscribers with an abundant supply of local sports content, featuring live events called by local play-by-play -play professionals, comprehensive highlights, feature stories, weekly shows, documentaries, and video podcasts. Welcome to the neighborhood. NSPN.TV. New pitcher for Bemidji is Turner Storm, who had been the DH here today. So Turner will come in and he'll face Zach Hollis. So to reset it back-to-back -back singles for Stark here to start things off at the top of the ninth. So nobody out. Game tied at one. It was Helgett and Selner with singles. And now it's Zach Hollis, the best hitter in the lineup for Stark. 
Shows bunt, pulls back, 1-0. And again, Zelke crowding from first base. He was way up on that one. Stark looking for a clutch hit. And Holla lays a beautiful bunt. Storm slips. Will he get Holly? He won't. So again, because of the great pitching we've seen here today, we have not seen the field conditions really come into play, but Holla laid a beautiful bunt. And Storm slipped when he got there. So we've got bases loaded now for Stark with nobody out. And Dylan Klein at the dish. Dylan with a hit and a walk today. That one way inside and it knocks off the back of his helmet. The go ahead run, Helgit trots down from third. So Klein, a hit by pitch RBI and Stark goes back in front two to one. Wow. Talk about some late inning. Some late inning uh, situations you don't see every day. And Storm now faces Labatt, who hit an RBI, or hit a double and then came in to score at one point. And wow, what a play there. Sticking with it, and now Silner almost gets hit as he tagged and then was going to come back to third. I'm telling you, this game is, now has a little bit of everything. What a play out there. So, we do have one out now, and bases are still loaded. Wow. So, Labatt with a fly out. David Supernot now comes up, and that pitch is low. So, a lot going on there, as, as we saw that one. A great play, by the way, in left field, and the throw comes in as Selner was tagging. I don't think he really had any intent to actually go home. But the throw just about took his head off as it came in. So Stark with the go-ahead run in on a hit by pitch, a bases loaded hit by pitch. Back-to-back -back singles. And then Turner Storm slipping, trying to make the play on the Hala bunt attempt because that one's wrapped back up the middle and it gets through. One run is in. Hala stumbles, coming in from third, but he'll score. And it's four to one, Longhorns. A two RBI single from Supernaut. And now the Horns in business big time. And by the way, Klein they threw the ball to second at Klein, who overran it a bit, but first and second now, still only one out. And now Tim Seifert, who had the RBI single after the Labatt double his last time up. And Seifert continues a great state tournament here, two games in, some clutch hits. Opportunity for more here. Down 0-1 in the count, swung on and missed. Now 0-2. So yeah, if you're keeping score at home, three singles now in the inning for Stark. Holler reaching on an error. Klein taking one off the back of the helmet for a hit by pitch RBI. And Seifert watches strike three. So Storm settles a bit and takes care of Seifert for two outs. And now it's Sean Mathewitz's turn back to the top of the lineup. Sean, a fielder's choice his last time up. He is 0 for 4 on the day. Golfs that one towards center. It's going to be a tough play, and it'll drop for a single. Klein comes trucking home. Oh, look at this. It's not dead, so they're going to send the runner for third. And sliding in safe is Superdog. And it's still live, and now coming in is Mathewitz. Wow. So Bemidji 
just losing track a bit out there. And again, this is what Stark will do. They'll play aggressive, so what do we even call that? Three runs in on the play, unbelievable. The Mathewitz just drops one of the Bermuda Triangle in center field. Klein trucking in from second. And as Cox is now hit, so Bemidji at this point just falling apart at the seams. So the throw came in and Dusty Megan told Supernaut to go home. The play comes home. Supernaut is safe. The ball's still live. And no one's paying attention to Mathewitz, so he comes home. We'll talk to the official score to see what they decide to do as Cox now going to second. And oh, look at that. Hendricks, who is not covering at all, comes over and makes a great play to cut down Cox. But what an inning for the Horns. Six runs put up on a lot of crazy things happening. But the Horns will take it, a 7-1 advantage now into the bottom of the ninth. Let's catch our breath, come back for the bottom nine action here live on the NSPN.TV. Fast and flexible care. Count on the urgency room for expert medical care when you need it most. Visit us in person. Broken bone, chest pain? We're in Egan, Vadnais Heights, or Woodbury. Online care. Sinus infection, strep throat? We offer easy online care. Major to minor, we can provide the level of care you need. Visit urgencyroom.com. Mobile check-in now available. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more. What do they say about the sport of baseball? Show up to the park, you'll see something you have not seen before. The Longhorns of Stark put up six runs in the top of the ninth inning. Started innocently enough with back-to-back -back singles. And then a bunt attempt from Zach Halla as Adam Selner's pitch is ripped by Storm. Turner Storm, or excuse me, by uh, Ben Toma. So Ben Toma with the single. Start things off here in the bottom of the ninth. So Zach Hollow's bunt attempt. Storm slips at the mounds. So it's an error and suddenly bases are loaded. And from there things got crazy. A hit by pitch, Dylan Klein takes one to the back of the helmet. Push across the go ahead run. And speaking of hit by pitch, Selner now hits Storm. And just like that, Bemidji comes right back. And they've got two on with nobody out and we're gonna have a pitching change and it's gonna be Justin Haugo, the draftee from Springfield. So Justin comes on. A round of applause for Adam Selner. The veteran left-hander for Stark. What a memorable performance for Adam. He's been doing this a long time. He's crafty as we saw, and what a gem for him today, but leaves with a six run lead and two runners on with no outs. And again, now it's Springfield draftee, Justin Hauga will come in. Justin pitched five innings last week and got the win over Maple Lake. The ace for Springfield, drafted it over after Stark knocked out Springfield in a Great game in the region losers bracket, region 2C losers bracket. So to recap that inning again, hit by pitch with bases loaded and then things got, got really crazy. As Supernaut knocked in two with an RBI single. And then after a Tim Seifert strikeout, 
Sean Mathewitz came up and dropped one into center field. There were two on, and three players going for it out in shallow center field that had dropped in, so that allowed Klein to score from second. Following him home was Supernaut, and there was a play at the plate, and then the ball dribbled back toward the mound, and that allowed Mathewitz to scurry home. So all in all, Mathewitz scores on the play, but credited with a single and then an error on Bemidji. So, as a Zolke at the plate now, facing the lefty Halgo. And Zolke did single his last time up against Selner. Before that, he had struck out twice. So we've got first and second now, a single from Toma. Storm hit by pitch. And the relief in. And Bemidji's going to get a little bit different look now. As you can see, Selner's all craft. Got that curveball. Got that tail on his fastball, but Halga's going to come right after you here. One on the count. Zolke spoils that one to the left side. One and two now. Go back to what Selner has done here today. Or did here today. Gets this awesome Bemidji lineup. One for the record books for start for sure, but they're not out of it yet as now both runners will move up on a pass ball. Uh, two and two the count, now runners at second and third, still nobody out. So Stark's got a ways to go here. You mentioned Bemidji's lineup, how potent they can be. It won't take much for them to try to string something together here. Pitch is low, full count. So Halgo's been sitting over there all day, has to come into a tough spot here. He does have that six run cushion. Gonna have to settle in and get outs. Full count pitch coming. Right back up the middle. Got a chance to score two. Well, the throw is gonna come all the way home. Cypher knocks it down, but two runs in for the Ox, and just like that, it's seven to three. A uh, two RBI single from Zolke. Both runs charged to Selner. We've got a pinch hitter here. Brandon Lusher. Brandon Lusher now steps to the dish. Got a courtesy runner as well. For Zulke. So the Ox, still nobody out. They've got two runs here in the bottom of the ninth. Right at first base. Well, Stark. Number 11, Trying to move on to the Sweet 16 here, but. The best hitter in the lineup, standing on deck, still nobody out. Two runs already in, and a runner on first. And Justin Hago in in relief. Jonas standing out, wearing his Springfield red uniform out there. That's the first strike on Lucier. And that's strike two. on and stays alive. Still 0-2. On two pitch again, knocked back to the netting. close but taken for ball one. Let's hear the stark crowd below us here hanging on every pitch. They want to see these horns move on to the next weekend. 
final weekend to play. Swung on and missed. So Hauser settles in. And now the lineup turns over to Hendricks. So Mitch is 0 for 4 on the day. Play the numbers. Big spot here for Mitch. Probably happy to not see Selner out there, as I'm sure most of the blocks would feel the same way. But again, Hauser, the ace of Springfield's staff. So a good team down there in the Tomahawk East. And he hits the corner, 0-2 quickly on Hendricks. Mitch does not like that call, but 0-2. That one wrapped to the right side. Superdot dives, makes the play, he hustles back to first for out number two. The second on that play. The courtesy runner. So now two outs quickly, and it's Connor McNallan. Connor one for four on the day. Two runs in for the Ox. Runner on second, but two outs, down by four runs. Stark trying to cinch this thing and move on to the round of 16. He gets the call there. McNallan doesn't like it, but one and one to count. Winner of this game. Stark does indeed hold on. They would face the winner of Dumont and Richmond. That's our next game up here, right here at Belfield on NSPN.TV. Slice towards short, held it up with it, the throw to first, and the Longhorns move on to the Sweet 16. Stark Longhorns move on, 7-3 our final. What a game here in the second round. You've got 17-1 Bemidji Blue Ox team. Winners of their region moving on, are getting the bye here into the second round. Stark surviving Maple Lake last week. Take on another great program here in Bemidji. And let's recap it. So for Stark, Alex Zellner, five and two thirds hitless innings. Eventually, Bemidji nicked him up a bit, but Zellner still did a great job. And then Stark in the eighth inning, able to push across a run to take the lead, but then a, a call as uh, Cody Rutledge was caught up, picked off a first, but in the rundown, ran into a defender, was awarded second base. Colin Rutledge then ripped one to second, or down the right field line for a double. Scoring Cody from second, excited at one, but in the top of the night, six runs for Stark. And a crazy, crazy inning. Couple, uh, and Selner is our player of the game, by the way. So Adam getting interviewed down there. But Stark, with a couple singles to drive in some runs. And the Sean Mathewitz single, where he eventually scored three runs in on the play. A hit by pitch and error. It's kind of falling apart for Bemidji. It's been so good defensively, but six runs for Stark at the top of the ninth. They then hold on and hold off the Blue Ox for a 7-3 victory. So that'll do it for this contest. As mentioned, coming up next right here on NSPN.TV at Belfield in Faribault, we've got Dumont and Richmond. Stick with us, folks. Another good one coming up from State Amateur Baseball Tournament.